So we had the Microsoft booth, and um, these are pretty uh, beautiful phones here, and they are in the market. So who are you? My name is Zoltan Manai, and I'm working as a product manager for CEE area. I'm working for Hungary, Czech, Slovakia, and some other countries. My responsibility area is actually I'm dealing with these phones, and also I'm responsible to talk about this very, very nice feature called Continuum. So who is my friend? Cool, hi. <laughs> so hi, who are you? Doing? I'm Jonathan Lickis, I work in the technical sales team for our commercial division. Um, and yeah, we, we're showing Continuum for phone today. Continuum is awesome, right? Yeah. So, how many people are using Continuum right now? It's like uh, growing fast, right? Well, we launched Continuum as a feature on our new 900 series flagship devices. So, the 950 and the 950 XL are both capable of docking with the, the Microsoft Display Dock. And, and at this and show, Acer is there. launching Continuum also? Yeah, so Continuum is a Windows 10 <laughs> mobile feature. So, uh, yeah, so Acer has a device that's uh, running Continuum as well. Uh, and I believe that there's some other you know, announcements being made this week as well. So it's, a, it's an exciting Windows platform feature, as well as coming to life on our Lumia device. So how stable is Continuum? How fast yeah, does it go? Pretty, it's pretty good. I mean, so I have is my... It's up to you in this very moment how, yeah, sure. how you would like to try this. Yeah. So the main purpose of this experience is actually to show and prove you that uh, it's very hard. Uh, or in, uh, almost unable to make a differentiation whether you are sitting in front of your PC or you're sitting in front of the continuum screen. It's a, so it's a full Windows experience but without the .x files, right? So this is ARM powered Windows? So, so exactly. This is this is running Windows 10 Mobile, not the the full blown Windows 10 uh, desktop version. You can see that we we describe it as a very much PC like experience because things seem extremely familiar. Um, but you're right. You can't run those full Windows 32 uh, desktop applications. You can see the start menu looks extremely familiar. We've got the notification and action center on the the right hand side. Um, but at the same time, you can see that this is still a phone. So, you know, on the top corner, you can see that there, there still is a signal strength bar. So, you know, this really is your, your phone. And uh, the, over there is the, that experience over there with the notification stuff. So it's uh, fully smooth. You, it's never going to slow down, even though it's this is a, a Qualcomm uh, 810, right? Yes. Yeah, so this is the uh, the octa-core processor, and in the 950, it's the hexa-core processor. Um, and these are the these are the most powerful Windows 10 uh, phones that we've we've ever built. But they're both smartphone. both the different sizes have the same CPU, or there's a no, different the CPU? CPU has a slight difference. It's actually, it's octa-core. The other one is hexa-core. But both processors are still quite much capable to make this kind of. Is it 808, the smaller one? Yep. So what's the difference in performance between the two? If, if we are running actually Continuum by the first sight, you don't see the difference. You don't see if you start a few applications, if you start maybe by tens of applications. Does Microsoft, does Microsoft have a solution to uh, virtualize all the x86 apps? Or is that not yet kind of, kind of like implemented? So we're, we're, we're telling over, I think it's at the, uh, at the other stand, but we're showing off um, today that we do have a, a universal remote desktop app in preview in the store at the moment. So that's a remote desktop app that, that scales across the full screen in the continuum experience. I think we're showing off over there how you can remote desktop into another physical machine and how you can even remote desktop to some resources as well that you might be running on a server somewhere. And so these are the ways that we're starting to think creatively about how users might be able to use this experience to gain access to a, a Windows 32 type app experience. Because that's what enterprise customers are telling us that they want to be able to do. You know, they want to be able to use their, their Win32 apps using the Continuum for phone setup. So, so this is kind of like the next generation Windows RT, right? Uh, it's like RT to the next level. RT was an ARM part at Windows already, and so this is this is running Windows 10 Mobile, you know, yeah. built from kind of the ground up for our for our phones, yeah. and yeah, it's still being compiled and built to run on the ARM chipset. Yeah. All right, uh, that's cool. And this this dock is uh, having all these these ports. Yes, yeah, so this is the Microsoft Display Dock, and it, it requires power into it, which is USB Type C. Uh, you then have either the options of a display port or a HDMI output, and then you have three USB ports as well, 
one of which is powered, so if you have a removable hard disk drive that needs power or something like that, and then you just have your USB-C cable that comes out to the front. And uh, the reason that on our solution of the dock, we've gone for the, the cable, as well, uh, rather than actually you docking it into the unit, is that while you're running Continuum then, you can still do things on this device, like make a phone call, or send a text message, or maybe uh, dictate to Cortana, um, and you're still able to use that, that PC-like experience to be working on your, your apps, and uh, this is going to empower users to be more productive. There's no absolutely no slowdowns, you just do two things at the same time, yeah, here and there. Slow. I mean, and you're seeing this in action right now, this is ours, you know, yeah. using my phone, doing some emails as well, you know, it's, it's working. Do you have some apps that are like Windows? That you can drag around? Or are they all full screen yeah, apps? Yeah, everything runs full screen. Everything runs full screen. But you can see that in a familiar way, the apps are still running in the background, are down there at the bottom, so you can easily switch between them. And then as well, you've got the multitask switcher so that you can uh, you know, swap switch between things if you want to. So how's the excitement for this? It's been one or two or three months now on the market? Yeah, I mean, we unveiled this back in October. And uh, yeah, the excitement certainly from our enterprise customers, which is, is who I predominantly work with, has been massively exciting. Um, you know, they see this being a massively productive tool for their information workers who are maybe mobile a lot of the time and then just want to come into like a hot desk environment. And then if you think about uh, like task workers, maybe uh, police officers, people who are doing quite um, you know, tasks where they're out in uh, you know, retail stores even, um, this is going to be a fantastic tool to enable them to be productive. So, so all the Windows exciting. phone apps, all the Windows phone apps are working, right? Yeah, all so the Metro, everything Metro? So all of the existing Windows Phone 8.1 apps continue to work on the phone, but in order to use the continuum experience for Windows 10 Mobile, they do need to be a universal app for Windows 10. So it needs to be a universal app that's kind of like the Metro API stuff? Yeah, we, we're calling it the universal Windows app platform now, but that's this app that has the ability to scale from the phone Guys, right across to the, to the, piece, uh, to nice. the, the bigger screen. All right, and how many apps are there? Oh, that's a good question. I'm not sure what the latest count, um, but certainly we've been growing and growing. So I can maybe follow up with yeah. you to get you those numbers. Uh, you don't support all the Android apps, do you? Is um, there something about that? No, no. not at the moment, no. Yeah. So we, we have some, um, I mean, back at the, the developer conference last year, yeah. we announced some tools to make it really easy for developers to bring their existing investments from other platforms to, to Windows. Um, and at the moment, we're, we're showcasing on our developer website the, um, the iOS tool. So anybody is supposed to be able to just make apps for this? I mean, yeah, we're trying to make it as easy and simple as possible. I mean, back when we had Windows 8.1 and Windows Phone 8.1 and even the Xbox, you had to get hold of separate SDKs, you had to upload your apps to separate stores. We're trying to make it a lot easier now. We've got the, the universal Windows 10 SDK, you can use Visual Studio on you know, Mac now and Windows devices to develop your app. Um, and then you can put it into, into one store that's available across all of these, these devices. And we've got about 200 million devices running Windows 10 now uh, across PC, tablet and phone. And uh, you know, our trajectory there, given we only launched uh, last September timeframe, uh, we're on a really, really good trajectory. And so, it's the universal, I would say it's the universal architecture for the CPU, like it's ARM. So once you develop, you optimize for the ARM, it's just going to work on this and that, on the phone and the future Microsoft smart displays and TVs. And Yeah, you know, that's the whole idea of a universal app, right? This idea that an app developer can, can spend their time to create a great app once and then it will scale uh, to work across all the different devices. I mean, I can show you an example of that here. Um, you know, I mean, when we talk about a universal app, it's a very simple example. Um, but if you have something like the settings menu, I mean, this screen here looks really, really familiar uh, to how it does on a, a phone. If I just show you here quickly. This is really, really nice and uh, similar to, to what it looks like in the phone. But actually now, if you scale that out, you can see that gradually the app adapts. And that's just a simple example, but you know, things like the people hub. 
again, you would expect to be able to see something there, but as you change it, it scales as well.